Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Malcolm V8. Today I'm going to show you how to install a Lincoln Mark 8 cooling fan in your 0304 Cobra Terminator. Huge upgrade, amazing cooling. Let's get to it. I already have a Lincoln Mark 8 fan installed on the Zinc, and since the engine bay is so empty, it's going to make a really good reference to show you guys the various mount points and what it takes to fit in here and just how much space it takes on the factory radiator, which I still have the stock factory radiator in here, so I can give you guys a good idea as to how it fits and where everything clears and does not clear, etc. On the other hand, the Red Fire, which now needs one, it looks like a box, a five pound box with 10 pounds of junk in it. <laughs> there is so much stuff in here. This is going to be a worst case scenario, hardest possible install, which is great because it should cover all aspects of trying to get a Mark 8 fan into one of these cars. Now this car runs really hot. Uh, I think in part due to the Turbo 400 swap and it's got a very loose converter. It runs very high RPMs all the time, putting out a lot of heat and this OEM fan which actually this is a repop of the oem fan it's not even the real ford one it does not seem to be keeping up all right i got a fresh couple of mark 8 fans there from the junkyard i'm going to show you what it took to make it fit in here like this let's take a look bottom of the fan top of the fan i cut these bottom tabs off on both sides and i left the top ones with a mounting hole and i actually used those to make it fit the way this shrouds like this is super handy let me show you how it fits inside the Terminator. If you look at the factory radiator, it's got these two bolt deals right here on both sides. And it works out perfectly with the width of the Mark 8 fan. You can hook it over the two bolts and then it hooks onto the uh, one of the two on the other side. And that kind of steadies you and locates you as a locating position. That's where you want the fan installed. Now you could technically move it that way, hook it over these two, and be on one on here, but that creates more complications. You normally have a coolant crossover tube that comes over here and goes down. So you want this motor to be as much over to the driver's side as possible to clearance that. So move it that way. You also normally have an ABS unit right here with a bunch of hard lines in the way. So you, again, you want everything more to the driver's side to help clearance that. This little bracket is but two inches. It's nothing more than just a flat piece of metal that runs from that mount point over to an existing hole on this factory bracketry so it's a little stub about two inches long with a hole drilled on each side and i had to put a little bit of a bend on it and i was able to bolt it up right there super easy driver's side also easy but a little bit more bending there's an existing hole on the side here of the factory bracketry where you can put a bolt in so you have a bracket coming out and move that out of the way and it just bends over and just comes up to that perch so you can bolt it up beautiful and it fits really nice and that's, that's your attachment points. It's really solid. At the bottom, I have one small little zip tie just to stop any sort of resigna resignating or flapping or vibrating in the wind, but it's not a structural point. The structure points are the two top points that bolted in nice and solid. You'll also notice when you look down at these, that these fans only have two wires, whereas the Terminator fans have three wires. Not a big deal. I'll show you in a minute how to deal with that. Okay, first step I think is gonna to be to drain the coolant out the bottom and then get this expansion tank out of the way and get a better idea as to what we're working with here. Okay, here we have the Mark 8 and the stock fan side by side. This one, I measured the diameter of the fans about half an inch wider than this one, but don't let that fool you. This has a monster motor on it and this pulls a tremendous amount of air. It will way out cool this fan. But even better, it has this shroud and that makes a huge difference. Having a shroud even on two identical fans, the one with the shroud will out cool it in a, by a huge margin. So now we have monstrous fan and a shroud. This is gonna be a huge upgrade in cooling over that stock unit. Okay, with the lower mounts cut out, you can see I radius these ends with the grinder and cleaned it all up. Made it look like it's supposed to be that way. Okay, ran into some clearance issues here with the ABS unit. The fan could not clear in here against it. We need to shift it more that away. So we pulled the bracket out that holds that ABS module. We're just gonna slot these holes right over here and it allows us to scoot it over a little bit like that and refasten it. Pretty much the same trick you do when you install a thicker radiator and need that extra clearance. So let's do that. Okay, there we go. This side was easy enough. I just took a grinder and slotted it right here. That allows the stud to move wherever it wants to go. 
This side, since I had to move that way, I used a die grinder and just elongated that hole. So we got our ABS module pushed up and over, and that actually required more movement that way than our slotting allowed. It actually has gone a little further and even over like this. And because the fan is so big with the motor with a Mach 8 fan, I would have had to slot this off down here to clear. And because it's at a bit of an angle, I'd have to brace this out here. Uh, we'd have to weld an extension on here, slot this further, basically completely hack this bracket up. So we decided not to because we might change things up again and reuse this at a later time. So instead what we did is we just went ahead and made a replacement bracket. Essentially these two just replace the functionality of this over here, but they're at an angle, which helps go with the angle that we had to tilt the motor, the ABS motor back at. And it also clears all of this other stuff out of the way. We made these out of steel and not aluminum like the fan to make them a little stronger and more structural. And they actually work really well. We tested it in there, it holds it nice and solid. So we're gonna go ahead and clean up all the sharp edges and get these painted and then we'll show you that getting installed. We have the ABS module brackets all painted up now. All right, it's installed. I like how this turned out. It's nice and simple, real strong. The brackets blend in, looks clean. Good deal. Let me show you the fan brackets I made before we paint them. And they stand out real good and you can see them very easily. So this is on the driver's side. This one just goes straight down. I couldn't do the around the corner one like I did on the zinc because of that coolant reservoir bottle there. But this goes down to the factory fan mounting point. And this side also goes to the factory fan mounting point. So you just reuse the bolts that were holding the factory fan in place. Super simple. And now these, they're not entirely flat. They have a slight angle to them. You can see there, and that just helps put pressure up against the radiator so it doesn't vibrate and move around. And same on this side. I made them out of aluminum, super easy. So now we're just gonna clean them up and get them painted. Okay, with the Mach 8 fan installed and mounted up solid, we need to get our expansion tank back in there. And right away, I noticed we have a little issue here. I'll just drop that down and I'll show you what I'm talking about. It doesn't clear right here. The piece of the fan sticks out too far and I'm gonna have to notch the tank over here to make that clear. I got to curious, obviously this is aftermarket, but what's gonna happen to guys with you know stock tanks on there? So I went and I dug through my stash and I found an, an old stock one so I can mock up and see what's gonna happen here. And I'm happy to report that it actually clears just fine. Stock tank has plenty of clearance, so if you're still running the stock expansion tank, you're in good shape. If you got aftermarket like me, it's gonna be a hit or miss here as to what's gonna happen. So we're gonna clearance this guy right here. panel's ready to go in. Looks pretty good. It's a little intimidating to weld aluminum this big as just a hobbyist welder. Also that 90 degree crevice in the center is kind of a tough one to do. Uh, I know just from experience I'm trying to weld those so <laughs> we'll see how that goes. I tried bending this as one piece multiple times but the aluminum is pretty thick. I, I, you know, I matched what they had here. I think it was 0.125 and it kept cracking down the center there so I had to make it two pieces to weld together. I'll weld it up. Uh, not the cleanest welds by any means. I really do need to work on my aluminum welding. Uh, some of the prep work kind of killed me too. I had some impurities causing me some issues, but it's sealed and we now have clearance. This drops down in here. Yeah, mat tab holes line up and we have clearance. So it's gonna do the job, get it painted and installed. Okay, let's talk electrical. On our Mach 8 fan over here, we came with a pigtail harness from the junkyard. You can see it's got two wires right here and the correct connector to go into our Mach 8 fan. On our factory fan that we pulled out, it also has a pigtail. This one has three wires. And we're literally going to go ahead and just cut this off here. Now we have this connector here that goes into our factory harness under the car. And this end here that goes to the Mach 8 fan. We're gonna join these two together and make a jumper harness that goes from our Mach 8 fan to the factory harness without having to cut any of the underhood wires. Now wiring these together, we have three different stages. We got stage one, super simple, stage two, a little more advanced, and stage three, a lot fancier for people who like digging into electrical. So let's cover those. Okay, the first setup we have is what I just call the stage one wiring. This is for the guys that just wanna make it work. They just want the fan to turn on. And here's all you do. On the factory harness, there's gonna be a ground wire and then a high speed and a low speed fan. Now in this case, they're both yellow. Most OEMs have an orange and a red. You don't have to worry which is which. You don't need to know the difference between high speed and low speed fan. All you need to know is which one is ground and that's always black. So that's pretty easy. 
And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the two high speed and low speed fan wires, join them together, and then connect them to the one Mark 8 fan wire. So essentially all you're doing is pinching these two together as one and joining it up there. And of course you'll join your grounds and that's it, the fan will come on. Okay, stage two is an enhancement to stage one where you go into your tune and you set the high speed and the low speed fans to turn on at the exact same time. And the reason for that is for load distribution. Let me show you how it works. You have a, something called a CCRM, which is a constant current relay module. This lives in the passenger's fender well of the O3 Cobras and has some relays inside of it, more than just the fan relays. You know, it also sends power to the ECU and whatnot, but for demonstration purposes, all we're concerned about here is the fan relays. So you have a heavy amount of current coming from your battery to the CCRM. Then you have a low speed and a high speed trip point for your fan. In that case, let's just say 180 degrees, the low speed fan turns on. That means the low speed relay will turn on and current will flow through and turn the fan on. When, one, when it hits 190, since we have a single speed fan, all that's gonna happen is the second relay is gonna turn on and now it's gonna share the load across two relays. That's a good thing because now you have a lot less chance of burning up your CCRM by splitting the load across the relays. And that becomes important with a Mach 8 fan because it draws a lot of current, a lot more than a stock fan. So there's always a concern that you may possibly burn up a relay. So if we went into our tune and we changed this low trip point to match, well, a high trip point rather, so we put them both at 180. Now, when it's time for the fan to turn on, the ECU is gonna turn both relays on at the exact same time, always sharing the load. So you have a much greater chance of your CCRM not burning up. Now, should stage one guys be freaking out and be worried about their relays burning up? Not necessarily. I've always wired up cars as a stage two or stage three, but I know lots of guys who have done stage one and their CCRMs have survived. So your mileage may vary. Okay, stage three, that's my favorite. This is where we grab one of these Ford Fusion fan speed controllers and wire that in. And that's exactly how we're doing the red fire. I already got one wired in there and let me show you how that works. Essentially what you do is you intercept the power wire that runs from the CCRM down to your fan and you feed it up to a fan speed controller which then intercepts and takes control of that. The biggest advantage here is the fan no longer just turns on real hard with a real hit and you know dogs your idle, hits your electrical system and so forth. It actually has a soft start feature so the fan turns on real nice and slowly and just ramps up to speed. But more than that, it controls the speed of the fan. Based on the engine coolant temps and conditions, it determines how much speed the fan needs to go. You know, do you need just a little bit of fan, a lot of fan? And that's great because then the fan is really quiet you never even hear it's on. Only under the harshest conditions when it's really hot and coolant temps are climbing and it needs it, will it turn the fan on full power and it'll sound like, you know, a jet engine under the hood of your car cooling down. Now the fan speed controller is a little bit more complication because you're gonna to have to feed it a PWM or pulse width signal. And if you, know, if you have a standalone computer like an MS3, it's all built in, it can handle that and control this. Uh, if you're handy with electronics, you can build a little Arduino circuit and do it, take care of it. We're not gonna go into all that in this video. I have other videos that explain this in more detail if you wanna learn how to do that stuff. Uh, I'll link those down below. So that's stage three. So let's build the wiring harness and finish this up. Okay, before we actually wire up the harness, always give it some power and make sure it actually spins the direction you expect it's going to. That'll save you an overheated engine and having to tear this harness all apart and redoing it. So if you were on stage one, two, or three, you'd have to build this little jumper harness. It's coming together really nicely. On the ground side, we're able to use a smaller connector with some heat shrink on it, crimped it down, got those two together. On the other side, because we were joining multiple wires, I had to use a thicker crimping piece. We had to get the medium duty hydraulic crimping tool, which is kind of fun. <laughs> so it's compressed down and now it doesn't have anything to protect it in terms of electrical isolation. So I got some heat shrink on here. We're gonna slide down, get on there, and then we'll get some corrugated cover on here and we should have a complete harness. All right, there it is, all done. Mark 8 on this side, factory harness on this side. We'll just plug it in here and we'll probably just zip tie it down here. And then this will just plug right into the car when we put install it. So very nice. Some soap water and a little bit of elbow grease. All right, a lot of elbow grease. <laughs> but it doesn't look so junkyard anymore. It looks a little bit more nicer going into the car. Not that you can see it, it's gonna be all covered up, but you know, I see it, so it looks great. Fan is in nice and solid. Brackets are working out great. We got plenty of clearance down here between everything. ABS unit clears nicely, no interference here. Looking real nice and solid. All right, 
right, well, since this car has an MS3, we can very easily run this fan through some paces and tests and make sure it's working like we expect before we finish closing everything up. And even better, since it is on a fan speed controller, we can control the exact speed of the fan right here on this table. So we'd be in that cell right there. So let's just set that to a zero. And let's go override the settings to turn the fan on. There we go, fan control. Uh, we'll have to adjust these values for the new thermostat, but for right now, let's say, um, oh, let's just drop that down to like 60. I just want the fan to turn on right now. And let's see, allow fan when the engine is off. Yes. And I heard a relay turn on, but the fan is not turning on. And that's because of, we got a speed control table here. So let's go and just, um, oh, let's just try like 20% to start with. Let's see what the fan does. Oh, there we go. I hear it. It's turning real nice and soft, 20%. Okay, so let's go ahead and bump that. No, oh, I don't know, let's make a big jump, like 60%. There it ramps up. That's getting kind of loud. So let's uh, let's go 90% full power. Well, there it goes. <laughs> Notice how it ramps down. It takes a second and it just gently comes down, just as gentle as it turns on. Very cool. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up these numbers here, and then we can get the. Uh, Expansion tank back on and finish this up. A tank is all painted and ready to go in. Pulling a vacuum over here. Now we'll go ahead and charge the coolant up into the system. summer heat but the zinc has had a Mach 8 fan in it for I don't know six seven plus years and even in midsummer heat it is just so impressive how well it works huge upgrade well guys we are testing the uh, Mach 8 fan and it's working amazing you know been doing obviously we're on the highway right now so it's just cruising along but we were cruising on back roads I was ripping on it um, and the temps are just holding solid and the fans just kind of riding where it needs to be on the speed controller Beautiful. I love that upgrade. So highly recommend the Mach 8 for anybody who's really pushing some temperature issues with the Terminator and you know, just wants to keep things nice and cool. So Hope you guys enjoyed and learned a little something about how to get that installed Be cool <laughs> Talk to you guys later. Take care